Hello. Hopefully by now you've watched the previous videos which discussed the triangles in a roof and the formulas that we will use to calculate our roof members. Now we're actually going to have a practice run at calculating some of the members in the major and minor sections of a, an advanced pitch roof. So here's a bit of a plan. This is a plan which, if you're doing this practical at Acacia Ridge, this is the plan that we use. You'll notice I've removed the uh, measurements from this drawing. We're going to throw some different measurements in there and this will give us a good practice run at how exactly to calculate all the roof members in this roof. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight these two ridge boards. So you'll remember I mentioned major and minor roof. This ridge here forms the major roof and that is because this span across here is the widest span in this roof which makes this ridge board sits higher up than this ridge board. So anything coming off this ridge is forming the major part of the roof. Anything that comes off this ridge is forming the minor part of the roof. The only exception this time is in this video we are not discussing this octagonal end and neither are we discussing this splayed end. So we're just sticking to basically across there and across here and this hip end which comes off the major ridge. So here are some measurements that I've thrown in an example. You will notice when you pick up your practical your measurements will not be the same as these ones so anything we calculate in this video don't try and reuse those figures this is just your practice run. Here is the common rafter in our major section of roof. You'll notice that this rafter is an exact copy of one, two, three, four common rafters and it's also a copy of one, two crown end rafters. So all of those rafters, these five and those two crown ends, they've got the same run and the same geometric length. So once you've worked out this one, you'll be able to copy those answers in for all the other ones. So this has a span of 700, uh, sorry, a run of 700, and it's simply the span of that section of roof divided by two. It's important to remember when you're looking for a span or trying to measure a span, you are measuring at right angles to the ridge board. If you're measuring parallel to a ridge board across in that direction, then you're actually measuring the length of the roof, not the span of it. The span is always across the ridge board in line with two common rafters sitting in that direction. We've also got a common rafter marked here in our minor section of roof. Now this, we need the span across here so that we can get the run of this one. And you'll notice it's not marked here on the plan. So we need to do a little bit of uh, maths to work that out. So we have a, a length across here of two meters from corner to corner. And you'll notice if we flick up here, we've got a measurement from that corner to there of 700. So if we simply go two meters minus 700, that gives us a span left here of 1300, which divided by two gives us a run of 650. So here are the formulas we discussed in the previous video, and you'll do yourself a big favor if you can memorize those three formulas. There's a fourth one that we're not going to be using in this video, but um, for the sake of uh, this video. The first one here and the last one are the ones we're going to be using the most. So if you grab these figures and you use this formula at the top here, this will give you the geometric length of these rafters. So for the sake of this example, we're going to use a roof pitch of 30 degrees. And what I'll get you to do is to pause the video and run that through the formula with 30 degrees and have a go at running that one through. And then we'll see if the answer you get matches the one that I'm about to give you. Okay, so the answer I've got is 751 for the minor common rafter and 808 for the major common rafter. So hopefully you got the same answers. The next rafter we're going to look at is this hip rafter coming down here. Now this hip rafter is what you might call just a standard hip end rafter. It's not part of a rafter that is sort of an unusual shape or an unusual angle. If you have completed your pitched roof subject you'll have already dealt with a standard hip end rafter like this. So this time we're going to be using this Pythagoras 
formula. This is the one we use most of the time for HIPs. So we have to run uh, this formula, we need the two sides of it. We already have this side. This is the run of that common rafter. And we need the run, the distance across here, which equals the run of that rafter, because this is the 45 degree triangle, whatever that is, equals whatever this is along the top plate here. So we simply go 700 squared, 700 squared, press the equal sign, get the square root of that answer, and that gives you the run of this triangle. And there we are, 990. Hopefully you got the same answer. So it's important to remember, if we use the run of that and the run of here, it gives us the run of the hip. To get the geometric length of the hip, we need to go to the triangle which runs up the rake of the roof. So this triangle that we're looking at, the run, is flat on the deck horizontal. If we throw in this 808 measurement, this is the geometric length up that rafter. So th now we're looking at the triangle that runs up the rake of the roof. So we go 808 squared, 700 squared. I'll get you to run that through your calculator, see what answer you get. And hopefully your answer is a metre and 69 for the geometric length of that rafter. So we're simply running that formula through twice, once with the run of this rafter and once with the GL of that rafter. And that gives us the run and the GL of that hip. All right, let's get rid of those figures. The next rafter we're going to look at is the valley rafter coming down here. Now this follows exactly the same rules, but the one catch we've got with this rafter is where this meets right in the peak of the top plate, we don't have a rafter along here. So with this, this triangle, it was very easy. We already had a line there and a line there to go off. This time we don't. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend that top plate all the way through and fill in that line and I'll fill that line in and there is our triangle. So effectively is what I've done is I've taken a rafter just like this one and I've just plonked it in there for the sake of the drawing and that gives me the triangle I'm going to work out. So how do we work out the size of this triangle? Well, this pretend rafter that I've put in there, we actually already know the run of that rafter because it equals the run on the one on the other side. And being a standard valley, it's not in a a weird unequal pitch roof, it's just a normal pitched roof, it's a normal 45 degree valley which means whatever the run is there, it's the same distance along here. And so there we are, 650 along there, 650 along there. We're going to use Pythagoras again, square the both of them, add them together, get the square root of the answer, and we end up with a run of 919 down the valley. So to get the geometric length, of that valley we do the same thing, we find the geometric length of that rafter, we go 751 squared, 650 squared, do the same thing with those figures, and that gives us a run of 993. So I'd like you to pause the video and run those figures through your calculator and make sure you've got the same answers. Alright, so let's get rid of that. Let's look at this one here, this is a broken hip. So this broken hip is actually quite easy. It's one of the easier ones to work out in a uh, hip and valley roof. What I'm going to do, I'm going to extend that line all the way down until it hits the top plate. Now what we have with those two combined is if you imagine a line that is exactly the same as this hip. If this were not an L-shaped building, if we simply cut that off there, got rid of that splayed end and turned it into just a, a normal rectangular building, this is where that full hip would be. And you'll notice at this point where it hits the uh, ridge board, if we turn that across to there, that valley equals what would be the hip if there were a hip there. So that is a very useful little fact in a hip and valley roof. That means Whatever this full hip is, minus whatever that distance is, which is the same as our valley, equals broken hip. So that just means run of this hip minus run of valley equals run of broken hip. And it works with the GL as well. The GL of this major hip 
minus the GL of this valley equals the GL of this hip. So that gives us a run of 71 and it gives us a GL of 76. So this is quite a small broken hip in this drawing and that's because this span of 1300 is not very far away from this span of 1400. There's only a 100 mil difference between the spans which is why in this example this broken hip has ended up such a small measurement. Okay, so let's get rid of that. The next rafter we're going to look at is this creeper rafter down here. Now the creeper rafter is coming down a standard hip. Again, is another one that's very easy to work out. All we have to do is, if we imagine a line going across here, we've created a triangle here where this distance equals that distance. And what that means is, however far apart these rafters are, that is how much shorter each creeper rafter gets. So if we simply take the run of that rafter minus the spacing between them from there to there, that will equal the run of this rafter. 700 minus 450 equals 250. That's a very easy way of getting the run of this creeper. It's important to remember though that rule, it only works with a normal standard 45 degree hip. It won't work with the creeper down this hip because it's not a standard angle in that corner. So again, to get the geometric length, I would like you to pause the video, have a think about how to get the geometric length of that uh, rafter, have a go on your calculator working it out, and see if you get the same answer that I'm about to give you. Alright, so hopefully you know to use this GL formula at the top here which gives us 250 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees gives us 289. So we've got 289 there. Let's just get rid of some of those figures that we don't need. We're going to look at this valley rafter coming down into this point here. So this one is a little bit more involved to get that run but it's a pretty simple process once you understand it. What I'm going to do is highlight these two rafters here. We've got the crown in rafter here and the common rafter of the minor roof here. So if we simply take whatever the run of this is minus the run of that, in this case that gives us a measurement of 50 mil and that's 50 mil from the center of this ridge board to the center of that valley rafter. Now what I'm going to do is extend this line through and where this valley rafter hits the valley I'm going to extend, extend that line through there as well. So there they are and I'll just drop these out to get rid of them. What we have is two squares with two 45 degree lines going through them. That means whatever width this is the run of that rafter will be twice that. So 50 times 2 equals a 100 mil run. So it's just simply major common rafter run minus minor common rafter run gives you the offset times by two gives you the run of that. Now to get the geometric length we do the same thing as we do for all of the other rafters in the uh, common rafter family and that is use this GL formula. And that gives us a geometric length of 115. So now we'll work out this common rafter on this side and this one actually turns out is very easy to get and in fact we've already worked out some of the figures for this one. If you have a look from this point to that point, this distance from there to there in this situation is actually our maximum rafter spacing. We've got a full 450 from there to there which means if it's 450 that way it's 450 that way and that gives us the run of 450. Use the same figure for our GL, a GL of 520. So again I would like you to pause the video and run that through your calculator make sure you are still getting the correct answers. So now these are all the rafters we have calculated out so everything in the major and minor roof not including the octagonal end and the uh, splayed end there. 